The stock market is about to explode. You have already probably heard the news that the Fed has lowered interest rate by 0.5%. And that is going to have very serious implication on the economy, on the job market, and the stock market overall. So what we're going to do in this video is that we're going to, we are going to break down everything and understand the implications of the Fed's action on the economy, but most importantly, how is that going to impact you personally? So let's dive in. The Fed has lowered interest rate by 0.5%. And a lot of people might say that, what is the big deal? It's just 0.5%. But if you know anything about the Fed, a 0.5% decrease is going to have substantial impact on the economy. And the interesting thing about it is that what the Fed achieved mainly about it is that it literally changed the direction of the market. Because at this point, it seems like the Fed is this secretive society that nobody knows what is happening. Like I remember back in August, everybody was talking. It was August or June. I don't really remember the last Fed's policy that they have actually taken to keep the rates the way they are. But everybody back then was expecting that the Fed is going to lower interest rate. And that was basically everywhere. At the end of the day, Jay Paul came out and he said that, no, we're going to keep the interest rates the way they are now. And that's why changing them now seems like the Fed took this decision last minute. Because Fed acts as if it's like Illuminati society that nobody knows what's happening. And just 15 minutes before the press conference, j Paul decided to take this decision. Of course, it's not like that. And they take a look at the data and that decision have been made probably much earlier than that. But that's how it looks from a side. What you need to understand about the Fed is that Fed's main job is to send the right signals to the market because the wrong signals can destroy the economy. When you're actually investing or doing anything when it comes to the economy, the most important thing is not what is happening to the market today. The most important thing is what people think is going to happen to the market because based on their expectations, people are going to take decisions what to do next. Let me give you a very simple example just to illustrate the point that I'm trying to make here. Which stocks are you going to buy? The stocks that are rising now or the stocks that you believe are going to rise in the foreseeable future? Now, if you think or you believe that this stock is going to rise, you're going to buy this stock, wait until it rises, and you're going to make money. If a company, for example, wants to hire people or develop a new product, the reason they do that is because they believe that there is going to be a demand in the future about for this product. Like nobody cares what happened in the past and nobody really cares what is happening today. So if we actually manipulate the expectations of the investors about what they believe is going to happen and the about the future of the economy, we can manipulate their actions. In other words, you can say to a certain extent that the economy works like a placebo effect. If if people think that the market is going to grow, if we can convince people that the market is going to grow, they will invest in the stock market. Investing in the stock market is going to raise the demand substantially and raising the demand is going to lead to the same outcome, which is leading the stock market to rise and increase. So it's as simple as that. So when the Fed comes out and they send all these mixed signals to the market, it's essential for the Fed to ensure that they are manipulating with public's opinion because that is going to have the biggest impact. Now, let me give you an example of what has, has been happening over here. Like a lot of experts were expecting that the Fed might raise the rates by 25%. After the last press conference by the Fed, a lot of people were kind of disappointed by what has been happening. And now they were very skeptical whether the Fed is going to lower the rates or not. And even those who believe that the Fed might lower interest rates, they thought that it's going to have by just 0.25%. Now, there is a big difference between 0.25% and 0.5%. So they thought that there might be two lowering down of interest rates by the end of the year. One is happening in September and the other is closer to the end of the year, which is in November or December or something like that. But no, the Fed came out and it destroyed all people's opinions and expectations about the future and drastically lowered the rates by 0.5%. And now everybody in the market and investors or the Wall Street or the world is like, wait a second, 
If the Fed is lowering the rates by 0.5%, it exceeded our expectations. And if there is going to be another lowering of interest rates, for example, by the end of the year or the beginning of next year, probably by summer of next year, interest rates could be lowered down by around 2%. And that means that the cost of borrowing money will be substantially much cheaper and that will lead to the rise of the stock market and the growth of the economy overall. So the main objective that I think the Fed achieved by lowering interest rates by substantially is that it wanted to change the direction of the market and I think it did that successfully. Because if the Fed just lowered them, lowered them down by 25%, which is what everybody expected, it, it could have actually sent shockwaves to the to the market that and would have built a negative opinion about what could potentially happen to the market. Because if everybody believes that we are in a recession and the Fed is not going to do anything about it because inflation is significantly worse and the Fed will focus on that, then people will be afraid to invest in the stock market. And because again, it will lead to the placebo effect and the self-fulfilling prophecy where the demand will slow down and that will actually take the economy into a recession. But of course, the Fed broke that stereotype and just changed the direction of the market. And I think the Fed purposefully came out and said that, I don't think anyone should look at this and say, oh, this is the new pace. The j Paul is sending two opposite signals. On one side, the actions say that, yes, we're lowering interest rates. On the other side, they're saying that, don't trust what we did. We just, I mean, this is not the new normal. It is not going to happen again. But what do you think speaks louder? Actions or words? Of course, actions. And But I think these words were meant to say to the people is that, Yes, we are lowering interest rates, but don't take it for granted because we want you to be very careful when you're investing in the stock market. So these two mixed signals on one side sending this strong mission or the message to the market that keep investing because we're going to save you. On the other side, be extremely careful. But if you want to know my personal opinion, then I think that the era of cheap money is absolutely over because the era of cheap money where interest rates were like, what? 0.5% or something like that. At some point, they were like 0%. At that point, that was like in 2020 and 2021. Every company could get out there and borrow as much money as they could possibly can that would improve their balance sheets instantly. And that led them to make astronomical amounts of money. Of course, all of that money was based on debt. But when the Fed lowered increase interest rate of course that was all destroyed and a lot of companies filed for bankruptcy and i don't think that's coming because if you take a look at the data with inflation that we have it is not really as good as a lot of people imagine so i think if the fed would sub would further decrease interest rates i think the minimum is going to be something between like 2.5% and 3%. And I don't think the Fed is going to, to go below this number because if it's going to go below that number in the foreseeable future, it is going to have a massive spike in inflation. But again, the job of the Fed is to ensure that investors in the market are optimistic. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what the Fed is doing. The Fed's power comes from its appearances. The, Fed, the Fed's power comes by the fact that everybody trusts it and everybody follows its advice and everybody just knows the might of the Fed. So if everybody, if the Fed can convince the majority of the market to be more optimistic, it does not have to lower interest rates substantially because the Fed has to create that demand to invest in the market, to invest in new businesses, to invest in new projects. So I think with this action so far as it seems, the Fed has done a pretty good job at making the investors to be more optimistic. Of course, it's very early to judge right now. It's going to take us some time to actually know the real implications. But from what I see is happening, that's exactly what the Fed has been trying to achieve. If you take a look at inflation, of course, we had massive inflation back in the mid of 2022 and 2023, where it reached 9%. Now, 9% inflation rate is, of course, extremely bad. And that's why if you take a look at the interest rate, in a matter of a, such a short period of time, the Fed increased interest rates to almost 5.5%. There were something between 5.25% and 5.5%. 
I think something like that, yes, if I'm not mistaken. And it kept them for over a year, almost two years at this point, if I'm not mistaken. And it has done a pretty good job at lowering down inflation to around 2.5%. A lot of people might say, the Fed has defeated inflation. It's 2.5%. Isn't that amazing? Well, I have a very serious problem with that. It's not enough for you to have one or two months or even three months of inflation being below three below 2.5%. It's not even below 2.5%. It's just below 3%. And that's not even the goal. The goal is to have it around 2%. I mean, not more than 2.5%. And by now, we don't have a single month where inflation has been below 2.5%. And in order to ensure that we have actually defeated, there must be enough time passed where inflation has been around 2.5%. So if we have the data where we have 12 months of inflation being 2.5%, then we can say, yes, we have, this is a reliable data. But when it's like two to three months, then it's not really enough. Because changing any variables at this time could lead this could lead the could lead inflation to get out of hands and start rising again and go back to the same five or six percent. And when it goes there, it's gonna take us another few years of lowering down interest rates in order to fix it. And that's why I'm very skeptical and I don't really, and I think the reason that the Fed took these extreme measures is because it believes that the economy could fall into a recession. And falling in a recession maybe probably is a more dangerous thing to happen for the US economy. And that's why the Fed is sacrificing inflation and taking such a big risk. Now, to understand if we are going to heading into a recession, we have to understand the job market. Now, the job market is playing a substantial role in the economy. I mean, what is the economy at the end of the day? Now, the economy consists of companies, businesses, and businesses consist of people who are working out there. And that's why we care so much about the jobs. The pandemic, of course, led a lot of people to stay at home and there was a massive unemployment. But because the Fed lowered interest rates that led the unemployment to substantially go down, especially when restrictions were lifted and it reached 3.4%. That's a pretty good rate, 3.4%. And if you take a look at the estimations they have made about the economy, unemployment should, I mean, should, shouldn't have been risen this much. Yes, maybe 3.7%, 3.8%, but if I'm not mistaken, they were expecting 3 million jobs to be added, but at the end of the day, from August 2023 to August 2024, only, uh, only 2.1 or 2.2 million jobs were added. They have overestimated the jobs to be added by something like around 850,000 jobs. So that's a substantial amount. It's not like a, a hundred thousand or fifty thousand. That's almost by a million jobs. So the Fed is expecting the unemployment to be headed into the wrong direction, into the direction that they don't want it. And if the Fed isn't going to lower interest rates, for example, it might hit five percent by the end of the year, or maybe even six percent by next year. And that could lead the economy to fall into a recession. You see, a recession, the problem with this financial crisis is that they're so dangerous to the economy because of the fact that the economy works like a wheel. Like the economy works like a like a spinning wheel and it spins all the time like this. And if this stops spinning, if the economy stops spinning like it does all the time and it slows down slightly and then, and then at some point it stops, it's very difficult in order to spin it again. Like you have to put so much effort and so much resources in order to push the economic will to spin again. So the Fed understands this fact, and that's what, and that's why instead of actually stopping it from spinning, it is putting all that effort into here in order to prevent the economy from stopping. Because if we go into this negative uh, GDP uh, growth, then that will mean a recession, and a recession, of course, first of all, is bad for the economy, secondly, it's bad for politics, and thirdly, it's just bad for the world because of how what an important role the US economy plays in the US, uh, in, the, in, in the entire global economy. So the main job of the Fed, I believe, is 
to find a sweet spot. And that sweet spot is somewhere where the economy grows by around 2% annually, where the GDP grows by 2%. And at the same time, interest rates are going to be something between 3 to 4%. Now, I can't really say for a fact whether it's going to be 2.5 or 3.5%, but I think this is the sweet spot that the Fed is looking into, where the economy can grow at 2%. And the main reason behind it, or another main reason, is because the Fed doesn't want to lower rates to the point where the US economy will again fall into borrowing a lot of money and relying on debt, especially when we talk about the US government. I made an entire video explaining the national debt of the United States and that it is in a, such a serious crisis that the United States will never ever pay off its debt, even if it wanted, even if it changed its policy, even if it restructured its budget. Probably if the, the US will do a really amazing job, it might be able to do that. But I don't think there is a political will to do that. Right now we have people, we have both parties trying to gain power at any cost and that could mean over promising overspending and nobody wants to raise taxes nobody wants to uh, cut spending nobody wants to do anything like that these are unpopular moves to restructure and pay off the national debt and that's why i don't think the us will fix that problem theoretically it's possible but practically nobody is going to do that right now and in a one or two presidential elections which means in next 5 to 10 years the situation will just get significantly much worse but the fed wants to wants to at least put the economy on a track where it will stabilize it, where inflation is rising and the economy is at least having a 2% GDP growth. I don't think more than that is possible for the US since the economy has reached to the point where it's very difficult for it to grow that much and the United States has changed its policy of being less globalized and putting all these tariffs, putting all these barriers or these walls around it in order to boost domestic production and domestic consumption. I mean, domestic consumption is pretty high in the US, but they want domestic production. They want to bring back factories. They want to bring back production into the United States. Of course, the implication of Fed's action is going to have a serious impact on the stocks. The stock market suffered, of course, in 2022 and 2023 because of the Fed's policies. But overall, you can see that it has recovered. And right now, the S&P is trading at a higher rate than it has been at the peak of 2022. 2022 was that period where the Fed uh, increased interest rates. And increasing interest rates definitely has very serious negative implications on the valuations of the stocks. And the reason behind that is very simple. I know that it might sound complicated, but I don't want to go into the details of explaining every single thing because this video will take us ages to watch. But in simple words, lower interest rates means more cash available. When you're a business, and especially when you're and you're listed in the stock market, you're probably worth at least a few billion dollars. And a lot of these companies worth like I don't really mean those companies that have an over trillion dollar valuation like Nvidia, Apple or other companies, but there's a plenty of companies that are worth hundreds of billions of dollars, 20, 50, 70 billion dollars. And I know that 70 billion dollars compared to a 3.5 trillion dollar company like Nvidia seems like a little baby, but in reality, 70 billion dollar company is huge is really huge. I mean, think about that for a moment. 70 freaking billion dollars. It's going to make you one of the richest people that has ever lived on the entire face of the earth. But nonetheless, all those companies are worth that much in the market. But you have to understand that none of these companies have like 70 billion dollars in the bank. Only the top companies have. Only the companies that are worth at least a trillion dollars have that much cash in the bank. Maybe even some of them that have a closer valuation to a trillion dollars. But most of these companies rely on debt in order to finance their operation. And there's nothing really bad about that. If you can borrow, for example, $500 million at uh, 6%, a 5% interest rate, and your business you're investing in can get you 10% returns, there's no reason for you not to borrow. And now look at what happens right now. If we get the exact same project, but yesterday, if we would borrow money, we would borrow it at 5.5% and now we can borrow it at 5%. That means that our profit margins have increased by 0.5%. 
That means that we can borrow more money, we can invest in more projects, and from the projects that we're investing, we're making more money. And that means that more cash into the business. And when you have more cash in the business, your free cash flow rises, and that will make the company more valuable. So your valuations will automatically go up. Will that happen to every single company? Well, of course not. This is just the basic theory of how generally lowering interest rate is going to have a positive implication in the stock. And that's why from what is happening, a 0.5% decrease in the interest rate is going to have, is going to push stocks to rise. Now, the second biggest implication is, of course, it's going to make future valuations more valuable. Now, what do you mean about future valuations? You see, when you're looking at a business and you want to invest in a business, you don't really care what has been happening to the business in the past. Like, who cares? Like, literally, who cares? I'm investing in a stock. I'm investing in a business. And what I want to know is that how much this business I'm putting my money into is going to make money in the foreseeable future, in the future. So the money that this business is going to make in the future, I'm entitled to that money. And that's why I care about the future cash flow. I don't care about the past cash flow because I'm not entitled to it. Like if I'm going to buy a stock today, I'm only entitled to the money that the business is going to make in the foreseeable future. Now, if we, of course, we can't really take those future cash flow at face value because we have something called inflation. We have something called time equals money. And we have other concepts, a dollar today worth than a dollar tomorrow. So if you apply, for example, the discounted cash flow rate and we discount those rates, now we're going to discount those rates at a lower rate because interest rates have been dropped. And suddenly that future cash flow is going to become more valuable. So if the future cash flow is going to become more valuable, the value of the business today is going to be more valuable. And that's why this is going to lead to the fact that a lot of, a lot of tech companies or the companies that will make money in the future or a lot of money in the future, they will see their stocks to rise. So if you kind of understand the entire market, how it works, and you position yourself correctly here, you can actually make pretty good money. You can make pretty good investments if you know which stocks to buy. Of course, I can't really go a lot into the details, but if you want to know that, you can check the first link in the description. Now, the next impact that the lowering interest rate is going to have is, of course, the bond market. And I guess the bond market will probably see the biggest impact or one of the biggest impacts. See, bond market have an inverse relationships with interest rates. And that basically means that if we lower down interest rates, bond prices go up. And if we increase interest rates, bond prices go down. And it might seem very contradictory and very complicated at first, but think about that. For example, I'm going to just take the bond, bond prices, or I would say I would take the bond percentage yields at the rate that the Fed has set, just in order to illustrate the point, just make it easy for you to understand. So for example, uh, last week, if we have purchased the bond, it would have a 5.5% interest rate. Now, today, if we purchase the exact same bond, it is going to have a 5% interest rate. I mean, this is just a hypothetical example. Of course, yields have other factors that influences those yields of those bonds. But let's just take this example because the interest rates were dropped by 0.5%. Now, this is new and this is old, right? And this is a $1,000 bond. And this is also a thousand dollar bond. What do you think? Now, if I'm going to buy a bond today, let me change the color. I think it's going to just going to separate them in such a way where it will be easier for you to understand. So if I'm going to buy a bond today, it is going to have a 5% interest rate. But somebody who bought the bond yesterday, for example, at 5.5% interest rate, his bond has a 5.5% return. Which bond do you think is better? Of course, this bond is better because it has a much higher return. So the price of this bond is going to increase because the Fed lowered interest rates over here. And of course, the vice versa logic happens as well. If we increase interest rates today, the bonds that people have borrowed at the lower interest rate in the past, their prices are going, are going to go down. But that also means that the government right now can sell more bonds because the demand for those bonds or the returns or the interest rate that are going to be charged for those bonds are going to be significantly lower. The, the cost of borrowing money for the government because interest rates have been dropped is going to be cheaper. And when you borrow, when you can borrow money at a cheaper price, 
What do you think is going to happen? Of course, the government borrows money and it spends money. Politicians promise to fix problems by... And how do they fix problems? Of course, they spend money. And where do they get the money? When you have such a deficit like the United States has, of course, you borrow all that money. And that will lead to a lot of spending. Now, a lot of spending leads to a very simple self-fulfilling prophecy, which is rising inflation again. And that's why the Fed is so hesitated to actually lower down significantly interest rate and i think the only reason they did it is because they were so afraid that the economy might fall into a recession so the actions that the fed has taken might indicate to the fact that we might be either on the brink of a recession or we might have actually solved the crisis or the fed simply doesn't know what exactly it's doing and will only know the implications of, of those actions in the foreseeable future, in the coming future. But the real implications on the market are going to be very positive. That's why if you want to take advantage out of it, you have to position yourself correctly. And if you want to learn how to do that, of course, check out the first link in the description. Thanks guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.